What can I say except you're welcome? I'm Jonathan Decker, the movie therapist. Today I want to talk about Moana and trauma, which doesn't seem to be the core theme of Moana. And if you've seen the film, in fact, it goes through a whole different track. And then at the end, it throws you a major curveball that has moved a lot of people, including me. You do not have to be defined by your trauma. Moana is going to show us how. I'm the movie therapist. Let's do this. As a licensed therapist, I have helped a lot of people who have been traumatized and they've been through a lot, big variety of traumas. Whether they've witnessed something horrific, experienced something horrific, something was done to them, something that completely shattered their worldview or their sense of safety, whether it was one major thing or a lot of major things or smaller things, I mean, there's a whole spread of what could have happened, but they all share one defining trait. All of the people that I have seen, at least at first, are defined by their trauma. Let me tell you what I mean by this. For some people, their life was happy, they thought their world was safe, and then they realized that it wasn't something terrible happened and it forever changed them. For other people, they were raised in trauma. They were brought up being abused. Either way, this has a big hand in shaping who they are. Whether they see themselves as a victim and their world as unsafe and people are not to be trusted and I need to be taken care of because I can't take care of myself or whether they see themselves as an advocate or a survivor. I used to think that trauma recovery meant guiding people from victim to survivor and advocate, from somebody who is afraid and feels unprepared, from someone who is full of anger and rage and hate and fear because of what happened, to somebody who is at peace and is using their experience to help others. That's what I saw the track was, and that's incredibly empowering. But my wife brought to my attention that's still being defined by the trauma. Who I am is a survivor or an advocate or a victim. I'm no longer a music lover. I'm no longer somebody who wants to be a painter or who wants to get this degree or who wants to have this type of relationship or accomplish this thing. For many trauma survivors, it's hard to have a life again. You may remember Elizabeth Smart. Elizabeth Smart was abducted from her Utah home, taken from her family, and held captive by religious fanatics who brought her on to be one of the wives, who sexually abused her, who tried to brainwash her, who gaslit her and emotionally abused her, physically abused her, did all sorts of terrible things, and this went on for a long time. And when she was found, when she escaped, when she was saved and rescued, of course I'm sure she did a lot of trauma counseling, a lot of work in this, and she became known heroically as an advocate for women as an advocate for fellow trauma survivors, as someone who stood up to keep women safe and to teach them how to keep themselves safe, and if something happened, how to not blame themselves and instead how to grow past it. And that was her defining trait in the public eye. But that trauma still defined her. What's beautiful about Elizabeth Smart is she has a whole other life now. Yes, this is part of her history. She served a mission for a church. She has a husband, she has kids, she has a career. There is more to her than just the trauma. How did she get there? Well, this is where Moana comes in. If you've seen the story, Tafiti, the goddess, the island goddess, has her heart stolen by Maui. And the island dies, and Tafiti dies, and then Ka rises up, this vicious monster who wants to take the heart from Maui. And Moana's mission is to get the heart back. And Maui, he's sorry for what he did, so he wants to help her. So they get to where the dead island is and where the goddess Tafiti is no more and they do battle with Ka and Moana gets to the island and there's nothing there. Just the outline of Tafiti's body and Moana looks across the water and realizes something. And this is what we're going to watch. Now he's distracting Ka to save Moana. Moana showing great bravery. And Moana can talk to the ocean, the ocean listens to her, but she saw in Ka's chest the symbol of Tafiti. Let her come to me. 
So this whole time we've assumed that Ka was just some vicious demon god or goddess. She was scary and full of rage and not lovable to be avoided. I have crossed the horizon to find you. I know your name. They have stolen the heart from inside you. But this does not define you. It's the heart back where it belongs, which was always her mission. And we see that Ka is the beautiful goddess Tefiti and always has been. Tefiti. Spoiler alert, I'll get to this, but this is you watching at home. The beautiful, powerful being of light and life and goodness and peace. I love the lyrics. I've crossed the horizon to find you. I know your name. And then she says, they have stolen the heart from inside you. Now, if we were going strictly according to the story of the film, it would be he stole the heart from inside you, right? Maui. But the screenwriters chose to address a deeper truth. When they say they, it could be anybody. It could be an abusive mother. It could be abusive father. Boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife. Stranger, uncle. Anybody who's hurt you. Brother, sister, friend. They. They have stolen the heart from inside you can't tell you how many people I meet with, they say, I don't like who I've become. There was a me that was happy. There was a me that did good. There was a me that spread light and joy. And they stole it from me. He stole it from me. She stole it from me. They took it away. And then Moana says, but this does not define you. They have stolen the heart from inside you, but this does not define you. I know a lot of trauma survivors who this hit them like a truck. <laughs> that being of light and goodness, you may think you can never get back. You've experienced too much. You've hurt too much. You've angered too much. You've hated too much. You've feared too much to ever go back to where you were. And while it is true that your history is your history and you can't go back to the state of not knowing or not having experienced that, you can be that figure of light and beauty and life again. Elizabeth Smart, the reason she went on to not just be an advocate, and I, don't, I shouldn't say just an advocate, an advocate and a survivor is a powerful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And that can be part of who you are. But the reason she served a mission for her, her church, the reason she got married, the reason she has a family, the reason she has a career, is because her trauma was not going to define her. She was going to have a life. And that comes from knowing who she was. You watching at home, you're a god, you're a goddess. Now to some that may mean, that may be sacrilege. I'm not trying to like get all theological here. I'm talking figuratively. I'm talking who you are inside. You're somebody capable of incredible good. You're somebody capable of incredible power. You're somebody capable of incredible healing. But if you believe you're not, then you won't. If you believe you're broken, then you'll stay that way. The way that you heal is to embrace the light inside you. The way that you heal is to choose not to hate. You don't ever have to trust, you don't have to let anybody into your life who has hurt you. 
And you can definitely let them face the consequences for their actions. But when you choose not to hate, when you choose to focus on who you can love, when you choose to focus on what your gifts are to the world, and yes, if you need the help getting support so that your light can be mended, right? That light inside of you can be fixed. The heart can be put back in. Let us help you. We are here for that. So are many others. You can be whole again. Now, at Mended Light, that's our mission. That's what we do. That's our whole purpose is to help you shine your light again. I am the movie therapist. If you enjoyed this little segment, uh, we have many more uh, for you to check out. Big Fish and Infidelity, Star Wars and Anger, uh, The Incredibles and Vulnerability, and many, many more to come. If you enjoyed this, please share it. Please like, subscribe, tell the world, shout it from the rooftops. If you have an experience with overcoming trauma or working through it or finding your light again, or if you have questions on how to do so, please let us know in the comments below. I'm Jonathan Decker, the movie therapist, and I'll see you next time.